prior to the gold rush, uh, as late as 1848, San Francisco was a, a relatively minor trading post. In terms of trade, there was precious little, and virtually no uh, development of pier or uh, port infrastructure. The city was built on a uh, big, shallow cove, Yuba Buena Cove, which ran essentially from the base of uh, Telegraph Hill to the base of uh, Rinkin Hill, uh, where the Bay Bridge uh, now comes in. Included all of downtown San Francisco and, and most of the South of Market area. Suddenly, uh, 1849, 1850, approximately a thousand ships came in. These thousand or more vessels were all manner of uh, sailing vessels from all over the world. A lot of them were older vessels that had been pulled out of uh, retirement, essentially, so were not of great intrinsic value. The other problem was when a, a vessel came into San Francisco, the crew immediately deserted. There were these hundreds and hundreds of uh, ships here. Some were uh, reused uh, one way or another, often as store ships. Uh, sometimes they were hauled ashore and uh, essentially became buildings. The Maritime Museum, Maritime Park, has uh, uh, tentatively found the locations of 42 of these vessels. Within that old Yerba Buena Cove area, which is quite an extensive area, you're apt to come up with some uh, maritime related fragments almost wherever you dig. We are archaeological consultants, and we were hired by a developer to do the pre-construction archaeology for the 201 Folsom Street project. We knew a lot about the site history because the site across the street and the site that we're talking about now were actually related to each other in time. It was just one big neighborhood. And prior to its development as a habitation neighborhood, it was an, an, an industrial neighborhood that was uh, utilized by one particular person who had a shipbreaking yard, and his enterprise spanned both the project sites. Charles Hare, he was a shipbreaker. He came from Baltimore with his family in 1850, probably as a result of the gold rush. And one of the reasons he came was because there were a number of ships that were abandoned in a very small Yerba Buena Cove. He would acquire some of the ships that had been abandoned and bring them over to his part of Yerba Buena Cove and systematically disassemble them and sell the timber for firewood or sell the timber for parts to new uh, ship construction. In about 1857, it appears that the filling of the cove finally reached the point of Charles Hare Shipyard and it just got filled in. He left, opened up another business elsewhere in San Francisco and left behind his shipyard yard. As we excavated, we encountered the neighborhood from the 1860s, 70, 80 period at about 15 feet below the street grade, I think. And then as we went further down, we got down to Charles Hare's level, and that was about 20, 25 feet below the street grade. When we got to the level of Charles Hare's shipbreaking yard at 201 Folsom, we were able to find many of the same sorts of things that we found across the street. What we also found was uh, a lighter. A lighter is a uh, uh, harbor cargo carrier. Uh, typically used to carry cargoes, sometimes people between a, an anchored vessel and, uh, and the shore. Uh, they're typically used uh, when a vessel uh, can't get alongside a pier to be unloaded. It was sort of like a rowboat, but it was rectangular in shape and bigger than a rowboat. Um, some were propelled by sail, some were by oar, but they were all used for the same purpose, to go out to the ships that were anchored up in the harbor and ferry things back and forth. Lighters like this would have been uh, used for a relatively brief period uh, during the gold rush. San Francisco was the uh, transfer point between ocean commerce coming in through the Golden Gate and uh, river commerce going up the Sacramento and San Joaquin. So the function of the lighter was to carry cargo and people from the ships to shallow landing points where the cargo could be offloaded. As 
the port of San Francisco was developed, the utility of the lighters uh, disappeared. The form of a boat started to show itself in the dig, and at that point, historians from the park and others went to the site to actually confirm that it was a boat. What was overwhelming about the site was just the, the amount of material, pipes and tools and, and, and walkways, and, and then this boat stuck there. I'm not quite sure what the lighter was used for. It was dragged up onto his yard and was secured. There were beams put on both sides of it and at both ends so it couldn't move, which suggested it was subject to some sort of tidal fluctuation. And then attached to it on one edge was a work platform on the surface of which were tools and other things that pair just left behind. There's some speculation that it may have been used for uh, water as a, as a reservoir for water because it, was, it appears to have been situated right on top of a spring. And we think that maybe the spring would fill the lighter up with water and the work platform was used either to rinse things or to bring animals over to water them. They would stand on the platform. Uh, but the presence of the tools on that platform suggests it was something more than just watering animals. The good thing is it was in excellent shape. I think there are a number of reasons that the boat's as intact as it was. I think, first of all, it, it was a utilitarian boat. It was built relatively heartily. And uh, when it was placed on the beach and the pilings driven around it, those provided an enormous amount of support. The fact that it was filled with sand and kept saturated with, with water, I think is really significant in its preservation. When I first saw it, it was still packed with uh, sand around the outside so that it was being held firmly in shape. And uh, I thought immediately that we could probably save it. One of the things I, th I think that's really important is for people to see and be able to get close to tangible artifacts that kind of fall between the cracks. The value of that lighter is in part uh, due to its kind of iconic nature. It's, it's a little vessel that uh, was very specific in its function. So the condition of the boat when we it arrived in our warehouse was very wet and very sandy. The whole thing was very dirty because it had just been pulled right out of the ground. So the first part of our journey with the lighter was to really clean it. We had to maintain its moisture and we did that just by really just spraying it down with water. We did a fungicidal treatment and then followed up with uh, some consolidation treatments through the use of polyethylene glycol, PEG, uh, which basically fortifies the, the wood at the cellular level and prevents shrinkage as drying occurs. We have reached a point now where we are um, doing controlled drying. We are still monitoring for its moisture levels. Follow up to that treatment process is preparation of the boat for exhibition. It's probably among the two or three oldest boats in the United States, uh, which, if you like boats, I mean, even, even odd little boats like that one, uh, I mean, just the very antiquity of it is appealing.